and life are in the power of the thought. Whatever, whichever one you love, <laughs> whichever one you choose, by what you say is what you would experience. You could say that there are three major divisions of time in the life of a person. You can say yesterday or the past, you can say the present, and you can say the future. What you've experienced in the past are the things you've said or people have said that you've accepted. God has given you today to redefine what you want to see in the future. And how do you do that? Through the words of your mouth. Your words must align with that desire. Otherwise, your experience will be different from what you desire. Are you excited to be in service this morning? All right. Can we go into God's word? Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs 18, verse 20 to 21. All right, I want us to read it together. One, two, go. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it, shall eat the fruit thereof. Can we read verse 21 one more time? One, two, go. Yes. Dead and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Praise God. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to share with us on what I have tied to the creative power of your words. The creative power of your words. Can you be seated? Praise God. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Verse 20 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Now you know in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19, Deuteronomy 30 19, the Bible says, and this is Moses speaking, he says, I have set before thee this day Oh, sorry, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, using another version. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. This is Moses admonishing the children of Israel, saying, you know, I said there is life here, there is death here. I'm admonishing you to choose life. Not only so that you would live, but so that you and your seed, so that you and everyone connected to you would experience that life. Now, the Bible interprets the Bible, right? So Solomon, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, begins to tell us how to choose life. So in Proverbs 18:21 that we read, he says, life Death and life, rather, are in the power of the tongue. That means we choose life or we choose death with the words of our mouth. Now, I understand that there are lots of times when people feel helpless. And as we grow, the education system in the world, and even the things that people tell us, reinforce the thought that we do not have so much control over the things that are happening in our lives. You know, they tell you anything can happen, you know. And even when you pray, is pray so that, you know, it's probability. You know, it might happen well, it might not happen well. But just pray, sha, you know, so that the probabilities might, you know, work in your favor. And so we have individuals, especially Christians, who are walking on the face of the earth and feeling helpless and feeling not in control of the circumstances of their lives. But you see, Solomon is telling us that the circumstances of our lives are our own creation. We create the situations in our lives through the words of our mouths. Death and life. Death and life. If what you desire is life, then your words must align with that desire. Otherwise, your experience will be different from what you desire. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. He says, 
whatever, whichever one you love, <laughs> whichever one you choose, by what you say is what you would experience. Now, I understand that you could say that there are three major divisions of time in the life of a person. You can say yesterday or the past, you can say the present, and you can say the future. The truth is, what you've experienced in the past are the things you've said or people have said that you've accepted. God has given you today to redefine what you want to see in the future. And how do you do that? Through the words of your mouth. Through the words of your mouth. I once heard a story, a very powerful story. It's, it was a story told by a man by the name Dr. Paul Yonggi Cho. Now, some of us might know him, some might not. Now, up until the time um, we had Pastor Adeboye and we had Pastor Shala Shumakinde, Pastor David Yonggi Cho was pastoring the largest church, right? Up until the time we had these two men. Okay. So, now, in the world, and he is located where he was in South Korea, he's dead now. Um, gone to be with the Lord, wonderful man of God, written lots of very powerful books and introduced a lot of powerful thoughts into the body of Christ, including the, home, the concept of the home cell fellowship. Now, Dr. Paul Yonggi Cho said he was having breakfast with a particular um, neurosurgeon in South Korea, very popular, erudite scholar, he's done this, done all of that in the neurosurgeon world, right? And this doctor began to tell him that, sir, do you know that um, we just made some recent findings in neurology? And Dr. Paul Yonkicho said, what are the findings? And he said, well, we've discovered that the speech center in the human brain has massive influence over every other nerves in the human body. You know what that means? It means that when a person begins to say, I'm getting old. Your nerves says, he or she said she's getting old. So they start to age. When a person says, and you know we use this word, I'm, I'm tired, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm stressed out. <laughs> Your nerves begin to say, stressed out, stressed out, stressed out. This person must be stressed out. <laughs> say, I'm, I'm just feeling sick. Your nerves, and this is just science. So Dr. Paul Young Cho laughed. And this man said, why are you laughing, sir? He said, because before you people found this out, Dr. James said this over 2,000 years ago. And the man said, what do you mean? And then Dr. Paul Young Cho begins to show him from the book of James chapter 3. So can we open there? James chapter 3. Very interesting portion of the Bible. James chapter 3 from verses 3. James 3 from verse 3. He says, now this is James speaking. He says, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Now, this is James over 2,000 years ago. And what is he saying? He's saying that when you want to change the direction in which a horse is going, you use what they call bits or you use what they call a bridle. So some, some, I think some years back, or maybe last year actually, I had this wonderful privilege of um, traveling to Egypt. If you've not been to Egypt, you should. It's a beautiful country. Traveling to Egypt with my dear wife. And we went to this very interesting place. You know, the pyramids of Giza. You know, to see it and beautiful, beautiful structure. And it, it's so massive, right? You wouldn't know that there are it's more than one pyramid, right? There are about nine of them. So to see all of them, you would have to use horses. So for the first time in my life, you know, I was sitting at the back of a horse, <laughs> myself and my wife and the guy who was leading us. And he looked at, he saw my curiosity, so he asked. He said, do you want to, you want to try it out? I said, yeah, sure. So he gave me the, you know, the bridle, right? And it, I said, so how does it operate? And he said, if you want the horse to go right, just begin to move the bridle to the right. The horse will just begin to go right without saying anything. 
if you want the horse to go left, he said, just move it to the left. He said, the horse will go left. I said, wow. So I tried it out. I moved left. We almost went off the road. So I moved, <laughs> and I moved it. I said, wow. And this scripture came alive. I said, wow. This is what James was saying. Now, before I tell you what I'm thinking, go to verse 4. Verse 4 now says, Behold also the sheep, which though they, were, they be so great and are driven by fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor or the captain listed. Now, to explain this point, I need to show you something. Is that okay? Now, I had some help. Some help from Brother Williamson, right? You know, he's, he's a seaman, right? He has experience in that field. So I asked him yesterday, I said, what's the name of the biggest ship in the world? And he said, this one. It's called the Wonder of the Seas. You know, it's a boat, it's a, it's a cruise ship. So if you want to go for a boat cruise with your wife, I'm giving you thoughts, right? You, you can. With your wife, who? Okay, not, not. <laughs> now, this is the biggest ship in the world as of today. Started working or got into service, as Brother Williamson taught me, you know, um, from January 2022. It's called the Wonder of the Seas, right? Now, let me tell you about this ship so that you understand what James is saying. Now, this ship is about 1,188 feet long. Now, you might not appreciate what that means <laughs> until you understand that. I mean, I don't know who is very good with distance here. How long is this place? Approximately. Sorry? Sorry? Anybody? anybody? 110. This is 110 meters. Can you tell us in feet? What? 70 feet. Meters. Uh, tell me if it's, do the calculation. <laughs> but let's use a human being. Bro, how tall are you, sir? Can you stand? You are what? 6.2 feet tall. Now, look at Bro, 1,188 feet. <laughs> now, that's the length. The width is 210 feet. Number of decks. That's what you will call what in, when you build? Stories. 18. How many passengers would it carry? 6,988 passengers. This is excluding 2,300 crew members. And what kind of facility is here? 20 restaurants. I mean, some of you that like food, you like this one. Four pools. 2,867 cabins. A children's water park. Take your children here. A children's playground. A full-size basketball court. An ice skating rink. A soft simulator. And 1,400-seater theater. I had to stop here. Massive body. But do you know what determines the direction that this ship goes? As massive as it is. I'll show you. I don't know how many of you can see this. This very small steering, this is called the helm. This small thing is what determines the, where this ship would go. If you want this massive ocean vessel to go left, you begin to turn that left. You want it to go north, you begin to turn it north. Can you see it? You see, some of us cannot even see it, right? I had this in my other picture as well. So, but this small thing, now, this is what James was talking about. That with your mouth, as small as this mouth is, oh, right? I understand some people's own is bigger than some. But as small as it is, right? <laughs> hey, he's going to determine the direction in which your life would go. So, is it really God that determines the things you get in life? Or is it you? With the words you've been emitting <laughs> and saying, the things you've been saying. I remember when my wife got pregnant with our first child. 
And we had a conversation, and I told her, I said, sweetheart, how do you want this pregnancy to be? And she said, well, I mean, I've been saying certain things before I even got a child or before I even got married, right? She said, so, and the things I've been declaring are things in the line of number one, I won't have swollen feet, no big nose, I'll be fine. And I said, wow, okay. And I saw her every day diligently declaring those words. Diligently declaring. There was a time that there was a threat. The nose wanted to. <laughs> she just kept on declaring the words. It went back. <laughs> now, let me show you. Oh, yeah, show the picture. You have already brought my picture. Next slide, sir. Next slide. Now, this picture was taken. Who can guess when this picture was taken? What? Well, because of my time, let me see if we help you. Just click on the next, and I'll tell them when this picture was taken. 37 weeks. Yeah. That was when this picture was taken. We're going for Pastor Abby's younger brother's wedding. <laughs> 37 weeks. You wouldn't even know she's pregnant. I'm telling you. Because she already charted the course of the pregnancy with the words of her mouth. What are the things that life and other people have told you that you are saying, but those things are not in alignment with your true desire? Are you looking at the size of your pocket to determine whether to say you are rich or you are poor? You see, your words are powerful. In 2013, 2013, Pastor Damola sent me a picture. That picture, I mean, is one of the best birthday gifts I've ever gotten. Media, can you reveal it? Best birthday gifts I've ever gotten. Do you remember this, sir? You know, he designs. He's a graph. He does graphics, you know. You know, on the way to governorship. Just doing these things by the side. So, <laughs> now, he designed this in 2013. In 2013. Did I have a job then? No. <laughs> I didn't have a job. <laughs> and he looked at me, of course. We were all very wealthy. So he said, what can I give this man? And he gave me a vision. He gave me this. Till today in my study, I printed this out and I have it there. So don't be surprised. So some of us will not arrive accidentally. At I'm telling you, it's not an accident. He gave me this, and you know what? This has conditioned my confession. So when I'm thinking, I don't think in millions, though. I think in billions. I'm telling you, I think that's how I think. You can think how you want to think. <laughs> that is how me, I think. And that is my confession. I don't think lack. I don't think lack at all. It's far from me. Why? Because I understand that in God's word, it is a principle. Now, let me show you something in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And we read a very interesting story from verse 12. The Bible says, And on the morrow, when they were come to Jesus and his disciples from Bethany, he, Jesus, was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the figs was not yet. Verse 14, and Jesus answered and said, who spoke to Jesus? I mean, you don't answer somebody who hasn't spoken to you. But the Bible carefully writes, he answered. Because the fig tree was telling Jesus something. You will die in hunger. <laughs> what is your bank account telling you? What is the situation in the country telling you? What is your career telling you? What is the devil telling you? You are going for a job interview. What are they telling you? Oh, you are about to resume in a new place. Pime. You know, what are they telling you? <laughs> I'm telling you, what are they telling you? 
You see, the Bible tells us clearly, and Jesus answered and said unto it, Saints, it's time for us to answer. And we answer by saying, He says, No man eats fruit of the hereafter forever. And his disciples, what? Heard it. And Jesus went on his way. <laughs> Verse 20. The Bible says, And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from where? You know, the problem is that sometimes when we speak, we do not know that our voices and our words are creative in nature. It's creating the kind of future that you said. Right? So when we speak, we are creative. We are like God. When God said that, let's make man in his image and our image and our likeness, what do you think God was saying? You can do the same things God is doing. So how did God create the world? He spoke the world into existence. When you speak, your words are not just mere words. You are creating something. Now, you see, it started to wither from where? The roots. When you look at a tree, do you see the roots? Saints, answer me. Do you see the roots? You don't see the roots. Why? The root is underneath the ground. <laughs> when you speak, the fact that you cannot see the bank account changing does not mean nothing is happening. The fact that you cannot see the business changing does not mean anything is happening. A change has started in the roots. But what happens a lot of times is that we terminate the change with, uh, by speaking another word of death. Verse 21. And Peter, Jesus was not even flustered. Jesus knew what had happened. Verse 21. And Peter calling to remembrance said unto him. Now I want you to hear what Peter said. This is very important. He said, Behold, the fig tree which thou did what? Talk to me, saints. Did what? Did Jesus curse this fig tree? Literally. What did he do? He only spoke a negative word to the fig tree. But Peter calls it the fig tree he what? Saints, a lot of times we are cursing ourselves. We're cursing ourselves. A curse is anything that is anti what God's plan is for you. He says, the fig tree that you curse is withered away. Then Jesus said, let me teach you a lesson. For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever shall, uh, sorry, whosoever rather, shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. I want us to read this last part together. One, two, go. He shall have whatsoever he what? Ah. It's a law in the realm of the spirit, though. You always would have what you say. It is what you say and not what you believe you will have. You didn't get that. You would always have what you say, not what you believe. You would always have what you say, not what you desire. So, it's good to desire, it's good to believe, but what you would have is proportional to what you say. So, question, what are you saying? God's children keep having the things that they have because they keep saying the things that they have. Rather than saying the things that they want to have. And God has made available to them. Our words have creative ability. Creative ability. Creative ability. Creative ability. You are going for a job interview. See, regardless of how you feel, <laughs> begin to throw forth positive words. I walk in favor. I'm highly favored. All things work together for my good. I mean, when something happens to you and you feel that, hey, this is not too nice, rather than saying it with them, hey, I'm finished. There are people that have come, you know, they come to me and they say, hey, Pastor Joshua, we want you to tell us, he say, ah, things are going upside down. The first thing I'll tell you is that it's not going upside down <laughs> because that's where it starts from. How can things go upside down for you? Do you know who you are? 
Ah, listen to Pastor Damola's message in the first service. Do you know who you are? You are the king's kid. You are God's child. You belong to the wealthiest family on the face of the earth. Do you know that? You know, the Bible describing us says that I and the children that the Lord has given me, Isaiah 8, 18, this is where for signs and wonders. You can't have a stubborn child. My life is for signs and wonders. I'm telling you, my life is to win and win and win and win. My life does not go upward, down, upward. No, 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 no. I win and I win. I'm always increasing every day. I cannot have a better yesterday. He says, the Bible says, the, he says, the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. You see, when you are saying, eh, my life is somehow, you are negating the scriptures. Ah. Maybe one day I will show you the power and the effect of your words on angels. You see, your words are creative in nature. Creative, 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 creative. In nature. So you look at 2022. How would it end for me? <laughs> it's going to end with testimonies on all sides. Because the Bible says he crowns the year with his goodness. That is my experience. Ah. You know, bro Kenny, bro Kenny in the choir was telling us something yesterday. He just got a car. And he was telling us how, yeah, it was a beautiful car, good car. You mean you need to see it? Was telling us about the car, and he told us about how some years back he got the car, the picture of the car, right? And he cut it out, put it on where? Or your where you pray, your prayer room. And every day when he comes there, as he's praying about it, he sees the car, he says, oh, "Yes, that's the car," and just receives it, you know, and continues doing everything. He went to buy another car. When he got there. There were some issues with that car. As he looked left, he saw exactly the same color, the same type, the same model. And he said, how much is this one? He could buy it. They just bought it and he left the place. You see, your words are crazy. That car didn't arrive there accidentally, sir. Your words positioned the car there. You know, you can sit down today and begin to plot how your 2023 would be. You know, you begin to plot it. You know, that, you know, next year, you know, I'm, I'm traveling, not Japan. I'm traveling out, you know, I'm going out. I can afford anything. Next year, my income multiplies by 10. You know, you can begin to plot your future because your words are creative in nature. Woo! You know, rise up on your feet. I want to do something. I want us to make some bold confessions this morning. From Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 6, if you like, keep quiet. If you like, say it. Is your cup of tea? Uh, yeah. Can you shout out loud, I arise and shine. Arise and shine. For my light, my light is come. And the glory of the Lord, the of the Lord is risen upon me. Risen darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord, the Lord. shall rise up upon me and his glory shall be seen in me and through me. Many people will come to my light. Powerful men are drawn to my brightness. In the name of Jesus, I lift up my eyes and I can see all they gather themselves together. They come to me, my sons and my daughters, and those at my side. I see it. I greatly rejoice. Because my heart acknowledge God and my capacity is greatly increased because the abundance of the sea is converted unto me. The forces of the nations, they come to me. Multitudes of vehicles come to me. The latest models from the best car companies, they come to me. From Europe, from Asia, from America, they bring pounds, they bring dollars to me in their millions. And we show forth the presence of God. All the best products shall be made available to me. The latest technology, they minister to me. Every good thing 
is abundant in my life. He's abundant in my life. People will wonder how so much abundance has come to me in such a short time. And they will conclude that God is truly great. Surely, people in distant lands, they wait on me. They are airlines and ports. They wait on me. They bring helpers to me from afar. People bring millions of dollars, millions of pounds in the name of Jesus. And the workers from the best of foreign and local companies, they build up my business and my institutions and my cities in the name of Jesus. They are CEOs, billionaires, presidents. They minister to me. Therefore, my career and my business will have no low seasons. They shall not close any day or night in receiving money in the name of Jesus. The best and the most skilled people, they work for me. My light is shining on every side, on every side. My family is blessed in the name of Jesus. The smallest in my household shall command a thousand and small ones shall bring forth mighty things on the face of the earth because I am in the Lord's glory. Can you just shout amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to implore you now to give your heart to Christ. And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now, and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.